Welcome to a course on complex analysis. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the topology on complex numbers and roots of a complex numbers. These are required to proceed with the analysis. Let us explore them. <clears throat> so the first topic that we are going to see in today's lecture is roots of complex numbers. So what do we mean by a roots of complex number? Let us see them. Okay. But before proceeding to the roots of complex numbers, uh, we have seen we shall give the polar representation to a complex number. This shall be written like this. Now we are uh, I am writing this one as R2 e to the power i i to times of theta 2. So here we have considered two complex numbers and we say is it one and is it two z1 and z2 are same if and only if uh, the corresponding real part and the imaginary part has to be same so this is true in the case of rectangular coordinates for the polar coordinate case here r1 and r2 must be same and theta1 must be same as that of theta2 plus 2k pi where this k can be any value in the set of integers okay because we know this e power iota times of theta shall be written as cos theta plus iota times of sin theta and this cosine function is periodic with period 2 pi as well as the sine function is also periodic with the period 2 pi hence this happening uh, this is happening to be true okay in rectangular cases the real pair and the imaginary pair has to be correspondingly equal whereas in the polar case it is not so so with this idea we shall extend to the roots of a complex number okay suppose you have is it to the power uh, okay if you give is it is equal to r e to the power i to times of theta then you may write is it to the power n as r to the power n e to the power i n theta right i to times of n theta we shall write like this so from this if you try to identify what is your z okay you are going to get n different values okay so how do we identify them suppose uh, like okay so this one suppose okay uh, here let us have like this suppose uh, r to the power n e to the power i n i to times of n theta is written as r naught e to the power i to times of theta naught okay here it is very well evident that your r to the power n is same as that of r naught and n theta is same as that of theta naught plus 2k pi right so from this if you identify what is your r you will get r naught to the power n 1 upon n which means nth root of r naught here r naught is a real value okay so nth root of this real value and your theta is theta naught plus 2k pi upon n so from this we shall write r as nth root of r naught multiplied with exponential of iota times of theta naught plus 2k pi upon n here your k can run from k can be any value in the set of integers but still we wish to identify only the distinct roots of this complex number in the sense in that case we just restrict k from k runs from 1 0 to n minus 1 so 0 to n minus 1 gives us n different values and those are the distinct nth roots of any complex number is it okay so in general if you write absolute of z is equal to any value it means what having a as the radius you have drawn a circle okay all the roots of this n will lie on this circle only okay not inside the circle will lie on this circle so from here it is 0 it is pi upon 2 it is uh, 
pi it is 3 pi upon 2 it is it comes to 2 2 pi again so 0 to 2 pi is the range okay now you will have to decide how many uh, how many uh, like you will have to split this like this okay so if you are trying to okay uh, for the simplicity purpose let me take absolute of z is equal to 1 okay which means this is my unit circle if i decide to find out the fourth roots of unity then what would i do is that i just divide this 2 pi total area of 2 pi into four things so i am going to get these four points okay that i'll do it in different color for your understanding so these are the four points 0 pi by 2 actually we have divided this uh, 360 degree into four things so these are the four points that you would get so what are these four points angle we have specified here now as the value if you identify it is going to be one this is iota this is minus one this is minus iota these are the four roots of unity if you decide to split this into eight different parts so you will have these eight values as your eight roots okay after which what is happening the same thing is going to re get repeated that is why we restrict till n minus 1 so 0 is this point this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 this is 6 this is 7 and we come to the same thing when we give k is equal to 8 that is why we are not giving that so in this way whatever may be your given n what you are doing is that you have to split this angle okay so this has to be uh, 2 pi upon n so whatever maybe the value of n you give you can find out the uh, nth roots of unity when you are about to find nth roots of unity you can of course find the nth root of any complex number <coughs> when discussing about the uh, <coughs> nth roots of unity or nth roots of any complex number we have the nth roots of unity suppose you have this quantity which means your z may be written as z may be written as 1 to the power 1 upon n and this will give you n different things right so this will form a group so that we call it as primitive roots of unity okay so how to find out the primitive roots of unity are uh, like if you if you are given a set suppose uh, i am given a set g which is the uh, what uh, 1 to the power uh, 1 upon n where n is any value okay so only this this the distinct collection so from which we will have to identify some quantity and what is the number of elements in this group so we know that it is one with respect to addition modulo sorry multiplication modulo n this forms a group okay actually it is a uh, cyclic group also but primitive roots which means what okay let me give you a problem uh, s consists of the set of uh, complex numbers such that z to the power z to the power 10 is 1 and z to the power any k is not equals 1 for k less than 10 okay that is from 0 to 10 there is uh, nothing happening like this so how to find out the number of elements in this okay here we have to find out the primitive roots of unity of 10 so here the operation that we apply is multiplication mod 10 but the number of elements is going to be the phi of 10 that is phi of 2 times of 5 that happens to be phi of 2 and this is phi of 5 therefore this is 1 multiplied with 4 which is 4 so the number of elements in this set in this cyclic group is 4 okay sometimes you may be given a, a value like uh, is it to the power 10 is minus 1 and uh, is it to the power k is not equals minus 1 and uh, this is happening for these things so in that case you are given with minus 1 but you are not given with 1 so the ideology that uh, with the help of Euler phi function we have found the number of elements in this group here if you want to find out for this case 
what you have to do is that you just square it so that becomes z to the power 20 is 1 now you will have to find out this quantity so this is 2 squared and this is 5 so this happens to be 4 minus 2 2 times of 4 which is 8 so there are 8 elements 8 complex numbers satisfying this condition okay this is how we will have to do next we are going to see about the topology on complex plane okay so yeah topology on complex plane so hope you people have gone through the uh, course on real analysis that is the basic topology thing that we have seen things on a general metric space setup here we are restricting ourselves to the complex plane alone so here uh, <coughs> the first thing that we are going to define as neighborhood okay so in particular we talk about epsilon neighborhood that is the collection of complex numbers such that okay this is the neighborhood of z0 with radius epsilon so if you have to talk about the deleted neighborhood you just find this neighborhood and remove the point z0 alone so <clears throat> the deleted neighborhood of z0 z0 with radius epsilon is going to be the collection of complex numbers such that 0 smaller than absolute of z minus z0 less than epsilon this is going to be the deleted neighborhood if you just try to plot these things if you see this is your uh, if you consider this is your z0 and uh, based on your epsilon you will have a circle around it so you will have to collect the points inside it, which means you will have to collect the disk without considering the boundary that is going to be the neighborhood in this disk if you remove only the point z naught that is going to be the deleted neighborhood okay so <coughs> next one is interior point so hope you people remember that is if you uh, a set is said to be an interior point of a particular okay basically we must have a set in the uh, metric space that we are considering here a set of complex numbers right so the complex plane so we are taking a set a point p in e is said to be interior if there exists a neighborhood neighborhood of this point p which is completely contained in e okay we are saying there exists a neighborhood at least one neighborhood exists and is satisfying this property is more than enough to say a point is an interior point okay we are not talking about all the points we are talking about a point inside the set a point which is inside the set can be a interior point so a point outside the set cannot be an interior point to a set right next is boundary point so boundary point means in general setup we call that as the limit point so here we call that as the boundary point okay here every neighborhood of a point contains at least one point of the set if that is so we call that as the boundary point in simpler things if you consider only the uh, a disk excluding the boundary that is given by this one okay a unit circle actually this is the uh, unit circle excluding the boundary this is given by absolute of z is less than one and the boundary is given by absolute of z is 1 okay if you just combine these two things that shall be written as absolute of z less than or equals 1 okay so what is the boundary of this set this is the boundary okay if all the points of a set are interior points then we call that set as open set okay if a set consists of all of its boundary points then we call that set as the closed sets 
these are some basic topological definitions that we have studied in, uh, in the course of real analysis if you people just recall those things it is more than enough right okay a bounded set on a complex plane shall be written as absolute of z less than or equals some r for some real number r okay if that is so we call that as the boundary set here like uh, what else to say yeah uh, a connected set a connected set on a complex plane is that uh, if you consider any two points okay suppose this is the set this is the set that we consider if I consider any two points in the set if I am able to join these two lines using polygonal lines okay there may be if I can find at least one path of this shirt okay I may go straight away from here to here itself this is also possible if I am able to identify at least one path of this shirt then we say this set is connected okay and the properties that you have studied in the course of real analysis like uh, continuous image of compact set is compact continuous image of connected set is connected and uh, using the sequences idea all those things are valid in complex analysis too if you just recall these things from your course on real analysis and try to write the uh, <coughs> worksheet that i am giving you thank you